see, let's see, let's see. Does it work? Okay. Hello, Dan. How are you? Hey. Is that, is that working? I think it's working. I, I'm pretty amused because we didn't do like a sound check or a video check. And if it works at the first time, it's not the usual thing for me. Uh, yeah, people can hear you. How are you? Uh, pretty good. Uh, just um, I'm on vacation, so ah, nice. naturally I do some interviews. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, there's nothing uh, better for a for a vacation or for holidays that taking like fake interviews in front of right now 333 people, right? Um, nice. So I know that you already had your first interview in this tour uh, with Ben. And this will be the second one, right? Or it was another one in the middle? Okay, the second one. No, it's the second one, yeah. So uh, I have to be sincere, I, I took a lot of information from Ben's interview to try to get get you, not I don't know if it's nervous, but try to pin some of the pain points that you had on, the, on your first interview. And I hope you had some fun uh, in it. I had a lot of fun doing the, the exercise. Thank you, XLOB, for the sub. Um, let me. It's too loud. You don't hear that? Okay, great. Uh, can you someone hear the the sound? You can. Well, sorry. There is a a car outside with a really loud noise. Sorry, this is Argentina, people. I can. Do nothing about it. Okay, so let's back at it. Um, we have an interview of three steps. I will make you some random questions. Those random questions that usually uh, appears on interviews. I will give you a challenge to do that. There are two exercises. One of them is because you didn't want to uh, wear a tuxedo, so that was that. It's a bonus um, exercise. And you have some algorithmic uh, questions. So we will do as far as we can uh, in the time we have available. And once we start the interview, we will be... How, how much time do we actually have? Uh, the time that you want. If you are happy with it, you will have a lot of time. Otherwise, uh, you will have a little I to no time. I defer to you. No, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not in a rush, but whatever right. makes sense, you decide. Perfect. Um, so once we start in an interview, we are in an interview. We don't know each other. We are not on a stream. This is a real interview. Just you and me and sure. not the other people here. So are you ready to go in an interview? Sure. Let's see. Well, let's start the session here. Uh, I will send you a link through OBS Nisha. Let me see. Uh, let me know if was on the link. Let me know if you can open it. Yeah, people is right. Probably I'm a, I'm more uh, nervous than the people getting interviewed, but people, it's something. Let me see. Uh, one second, it asks me to sign in and I'm on a new computer, so I need okay. to figure out how to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me just log into GitHub. Um, sure. Let's see, I have like a lot of questions in here. But some of them are like troll questions. So I don't know if I should do all of them. They are nice. Yeah, we can do most of them. OK, I think it loaded. Yeah. Great. Let's show our screen then. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's put some. OK, great. Well, so we are in an interview now. Uh, Hello again. I'm I'm Gonzi. I'm I'm sorry again. I'm not Gonzi. I I'm Gonzalo Pozo again. Um, hello. I'm Gonzalo Pozo. I'm from um, 
a company called Gonzalo Pozo. And we are going through this interview. This interview comes of three steps. One is a motivation interview where I will ask you some questions uh, that may be related to technology or not. And then we will go through two challenges. One is a React challenge. Uh, I think you have some experience, at least it's something I saw on your CV, but we can talk about that later. And we have some algorithms uh, to see. Uh, we will okay. see how, how you do with those exercises. And if anything goes uh, wrong or good, we can continue with the other ones. So uh, we will start with the motivation interview. We have some questions for you. Um, and the first thing is, uh, before going to the first uh, question, tell me who you are, uh, what have you been working on on the last few years? Yeah, uh, so my name is Dan. I, I've been working at Meta, um, been working on React itself. So um, I guess for the most part, like things like fixing bugs, uh, reviewing pull requests, um, sometimes working on some of the new features that we're doing, doing some kind of refactorings, um, a lot of work on communication stuff. So like making sure that we can explain the things we're building, that we have like a kind of a narrative, a, um, you know, like uh, kind of like a messaging that resonates with people and that people understand like what we're doing and why. Uh, admittedly, not always great at that, but I'm trying. Um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much what I've been, like for the past year. I've been working mostly on the new React documentation, so we are rebuilding the React docs. Uh, there's a new version of beta that React just worked. Um, so I've been helping build the website and also write a lot of content. Nice. Well, uh, this this new project. Uh, we are hiring people for looks way more interesting. So I hope you shine uh, soon. And um, well, we can start with the questions then. Um, tell me something new you have learned this week. That's a tough I haven't, question. Wait, so the week has just started, right? It's it's like Tuesday. And also I'm on a vacation. No, 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 I, well, uh, but no, I can, I can actually tell you something. Okay. So I, I did learn that, well, it has nothing to do with programming, though. I learned okay. that there's a field called neurogeometry, which deals with how um, kind of the, um, how brain, how the brain interprets uh, like geometric structures, like lines and, you know, like shapes and how they kind of get represented in like the visual cortex. I don't understand anything about it, but I, I, I thought it's just fascinating that this field even exists. Uh, so that, that, that was fun. Well, that, that, that sounds interesting. I don't know anything about it, but uh, I am always up to learning new things because uh, I think you're, okay. Um, because always that you, every time that you learn something new, you, you start like thinking how the things you already know can mix with the new things that you are learning. Um, the, the next question is a really random question um, that does a lot of assumptions, but it's, um, okay. Do you want to read the next question aloud? Uh, sure. Uh, actually, I'm curious, am I supposed to look at the at your screen or should I open oh, no. some tab? In the you, you can open um, the, the link I sent you, the so motivation not... interview MD. Oh, okay, okay. So the question is uh, about the passport, this yeah, question? exactly. Okay, you get a passport for any country you like, but you can't work as a developer. You have all your current knowledge and you don't need license to work. What do you do for a living? Okay, let me think about this. I can't work as a developer in that country, or I can't work as a developer anywhere. Can I work yeah. remotely for another country? You are trying to look for a escape hatch. No, you can't work for a, as a developer anywhere. Like you have to say, okay, I will be a teacher. I will be something else than a, a developer in any country you want. Well, can can I not work, but just play? Like, can I 
And I work yeah. in open source and have somebody like sponsor me on Patreon, but it's not strictly seen work. Yeah, of course. You you can do whatever you want as long as you don't get paid. Like you need to do something else for a living that is not being a developer. Well, what what if I uh <laughs> like I said, what if I just work in open source, but it's not work because I'm not employed yeah. by anyone. And then I have like a Patreon account where I say, hey, I'm unable to work, so please help me feed myself because uh, I work in useful project. You, you don't have to have a scape hatch. You have to choose a totally different thing. Like, I don't know, I will be selling uh, lemonade on the beach. Like, whatever you want, you, you want uh, to... Yeah, mm. I would maybe, mm, mm. I guess I could just teach programming, right? So I could, I could like uh, make courses, and, which is what I already do, right? Like I could make courses and sell them or okay. workshops. And it's actually like, I, I'd like to also do some kind of in-person teaching. So that's something that I haven't tried, but that sounds really fun. Even though it doesn't pay as much, uh, but it it's something that I'd like to try at some point. Well, this question uh, comes from um, a Twitter uh, account uh, I saw the other day that was talking about what I want to do in the next five years. Right, I want to be in contact with more persons. Uh, I want to do something yeah. else. So this is like the first part for the extra question that it's. Also something really random. You are the owner of a digital nomad co-working in the middle of the Caribbean Sea. People uh, can't live. So people, it's in there. It's huge. It, it even has a lecture room, a nightclub, and a school. Which activities you will offer so people remain happy and motivated? And of, you, and of course, you are one of those persons. Um... I find the phrase in digital nomad really objectionable. I'm like, like it, it just brings like a particular stereotype of like an annoying tech person who's realized that they can get like paid well anywhere. And then they're being obnoxious in like different places around the earth. Um, yeah. So like if I, if I imagine this like digital nomad co-working space, like that just sounds like super boring because it's going to be like all these people who think that they've got it all figured out. So like I probably wouldn't want to uh to be with them and I probably wouldn't want to like if they have trouble with motivation and like they need motivation to uh you know like they need activities to stay happy and motivated like it, I think it's kind of their problem like <laughs> I would kind of go the other way around like take happy and motivated people and kind of just do whatever you know hang out with them and do what they like and I'm not sure it's all like I'm not sure all of these activities would be stream friendly. So <laughs> let's just leave it at that. Okay. Well, that's okay. Um I had some extra questions. Um someone told me that uh you might have some experience with Visual Basic, probably. Yeah, uh, yeah. I I have some experience with Visual Basic 6 and also Visual Basic.net. Nice. And how that uh, lines up with you started in programming? Say it again? Uh, how do you start in programming? Does Visual Basic uh, goes in line with started programming? Yeah, it was pretty accidental because I was preparing a presentation for school, I think, but I was always kind of really into, you know, like exploring all features of PowerPoint. So like I would uh, like, press every menu basically and I accidentally found there was a menu where you could like record something you're doing and then press play and it would do the same thing you recorded automatically and also show you the code because it would actually capture what you're doing and like generate the code that does it and so I, I've never actually been exposed to the concept of code before so I, I wasn't sure what it's doing but I could see like the numbers and like if I change the number it would move the thing by a different amount, so I kind of figured out what it does, and I learned that this is actually called uh, VBA, so Visual Basic for Applications, and it's kind of like built into PowerPoint and Word and Excel and a bunch of other 
Microsoft products, and I just bought a book on it, and that's uh, that's how I started learning. That's really nice because I really love getting into programming because you want to do something and not just joining because you know what programming is. I think that thing uh, allows people to grow another kind of interest. Um, last question before I start working. Have you ever had imposter syndrome? Uh, probably, yeah, I think I would, I would say so. Uh, I think it depends a little bit on the definition. Uh, but like, if did I feel like I'm surrounded by people way smarter than me? Like, yes, and actually, like, I am. So <laughs> I think, like, at some point, I'm like, no, that's actually, it's it's not like a syndrome, it's actually a fact, and, like, I'm okay with it. Um, it's actually Imposter great, fact. because I get right. to, yeah, like, I, I get to learn from them, and, but also, like, I don't, I don't think I feel it. The, you know, like, I think the bad part is, like, when you feel you're, like, you, you're not being useful, or, like, you're not, you don't deserve to be there. And I think I, I had some of that in the beginning and like for a while. And I think this time I kind of, uh, like I saw that people appreciate, like even though I'm not like the best at a bunch of stuff, there are things I'm really good at and people do appreciate my input there. So I think I just kind of learned that, yeah, like I'm actually good at some things and that's, that's cool. And I also have a bunch of experience uh, that I didn't have previously so well that's nice uh yes everyone thinks that the other one knows everything we already know and more things and i think it's not that it's not like that like there's this bandam diagram uh going around all the things you know and the things the other people know and you have some collision in the middle um yeah cool. although i would say that like it's also a bit naive like <laughs> If you're if you're you know if you're new and you're you're actually our new, like you you do know less than other people. Like that's not it's not bad. It's just yeah, because that's you're new to the to the thing, and so it's expected you will learn and kind of exactly. gain some knowledge and then get really good at it. But it's it's okay that at some point you are actually less experienced. It's not the syndrome. It's just what it is. Perfect. Yeah. Well, uh, are you ready for uh, the first? challenge interview or you have to write some okay. code. Um, sure. We will start with the extra question uh, because of the tuxedo. I think that you have a similar one, this challenge interview. It's about center the content. So you have to center this high mount text in the middle on the, on the screen, but you can't use Flexbox. Uh, okay. Uh, where do I, which file do I need to open? You have Is to it... src app.dsx. Oh. Okay, um, I can't use Flexbox. Well, what can I change? Can I change like spam to a div and so it's on? It's like, your application. You... you can do whatever okay. you want. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let me first, let me first just, oh, I can't edit. It says, oh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, give me the rights. Everyone can edit. Yeah, right. Okay, awesome. So I'll just try to figure out. Uh, okay, this time. Uh, let me just figure out where I am in the in the box. Okay. Um, yeah, that's cool. Uh, so let me let me send to this thing. So I think one thing I could maybe do is something like. Um, I wonder if I can do this. I'm not actually sure that this works, but I'll I'll give it a try. So um, what if I do something like this and this but also I think I need to do something like something like this maybe um, yeah I think that 
Perfect. I think that should be right. Doesn't that actually let me just verify that it makes sense? Yeah, I think it makes sense. Perfect. Uh, and I'll make this one relative because because we don't know where where it's going to be. Um, exactly. Which one is the most? Yeah. Great. Well, uh, that was really good. Um, I wasn't expecting to to be so fast. So points for you. Um, well, we can go to the second one. Do you want to uh, read the second one aloud? It's on challenge interview, the React file list challenge. Okay. Um, okay. This awesome feature called <laughs> uh, someone. This is awesome feature called server. This is not true. You'll you'll quote me out of this and cut it out. No, no. no. We'll make it to production next week. Um, it will not. It's it's still gonna be an alpha. Someone made an animated intro for the keynote presentation that sums up very well the feature in 10 seconds, showing a tree with different colors for client and server components. A client molecule text editor assigned you to work on the sidebar files team. They wanted to have a file tree component that shows server and client files with different colors and correct indentation. They left two mockup files. The project for you to choose which structure do you prefer. They said that you can pick whatever file structure you want, and they will refactor everything on their side based on your decision. That's so, the show of. Here in public, we have a demo a image uh, where you can see how it should look like. Uh, the file list, and you have the server files being in orange and the client files being in blue. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, so let me uh let me have a look at the okay. So I'm looking at the uh, the JSON file. So there's like one is normalized, the other one is denormalized. Uh let me reread again. Okay, so the tasks list show all folders and files with with list and list items. Files and folders should have correct indentation. Folders can be toggled. Okay, to show hide their content. Okay, yeah. Um, what is the uh, where is the how to make the app show up? Is oh, I'm just working in this app. Yes, exactly. is that is that where I start? Okay, Same. so I just I just replaced this exactly. with the thing, right? The only thing I will okay. ask you is like imagine that we are on some kind of a uh, Drupal interview workshop stream or whatever and there's people watching at you so you have to uh, tell what you are doing so people can yeah understand. sure 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 so uh i'm just gonna get the data first just so um so that i can work with it uh i think i would have preferred nested one because the structure of the component tree kind of matches up the structure of the data i don't know if there's any downside to that but i'll find out as I go, uh, and I'll just kind of just kind of want to see data here. Is that right? Um, okay. Okay. So let me have this at the bottom so I don't forget. Um, so yeah, so it seems like I I want to show a, um, so what fields do we have? So we have ID, file name, children. How do I know if something is a folder or? If it Wait, actually, I don't understand. Children. Wait, I'm, I'm actually not sure. And let me see the demo. Cause, uh, yeah, because I thought that you meant that the tree is going to have like folders and then items inside. But yeah, probably. It's I... not what the trees yeah probably i have the other one modified because i was working on different files let me see yeah we, but it doesn't have folders in the json yeah you can work with with that as um oh, i close it that one um i will modify the the file as you work but basically, this is like the root folder, and this is the app folder. Okay. 
Okay, I'll just thing. okay, I'll just pretend. Okay, yeah, that's cool. If it has children, it's a folder. Okay, okay, yeah, that that makes sense. Um, so I think I'll. So is there one root node or are there many? It seems like there's. Uh, let me see. So there's uh, ID one. Okay, so there is one root. Yeah, that's kind. Of, that's kind of a question to you. Yeah, there's just you, one. It's it, in nested. It yeah, you it, have only one node. Uh, you can remove the. Yeah, so it seems. One. Yeah, it seems uh, like the array seems unnecessary. So I'll I'll remove the array. Um, okay. So we start with the root node. So I'm just gonna write the component that I'll code node. Um. It takes the also, you can and modify the, the data nested JSON. We can uh, later send it to the backend team, and they will adapt. Uh, sure. So uh, I'll start with the. Um, so I'll start with the node, and um, so let me see again. The node has a file name, so. Um, Okay. Okay, there's a bit of an annoying thing. Like for the root node, uh depends on like how we structure it, but if it's like a list item, then there would have to be like a uh maybe maybe I'll just do this for now and then I'll think more about it. But like it would have to have a wrapper. Um and then another way would be to kind of rearrange them. So I'll I'll see which way makes more sense when I kind of get closer to this. But I'll start with this. So uh, I have node that file name here. Okay, so I have root, and then I also want to have uh, if there are um, if there are children. Um, so if well, does the leaf node have? Okay, and the leaf node has children null. So if node the children are not null, we're gonna show a list. And uh, that would be a list of no children dot map uh, for each node I render another node. So it, it has an ID and it's the node itself. Well, this is called node, so I'm going to call this child and. Um, TypeScript wants me to do something. <laughs> Sorry, I'll, I'll I'll look at this later. Um, okay. I I don't actually know TypeScript, but I can probably figure it out later. Okay, so um, yeah, it, that's a, the wait. Line, no, this doesn't. Five. Yeah, Sorry. I know. This doesn't work. Yeah. Right. Um, so it kind of looks wrong, and I think is it. Is it the styling issue or is it? Let me see. Let me just refresh this. Encounter the children with the same key one. How is that possible? Uh, oh, because this should be child. Okay. Okay, it still looks wrong, but I'm going to inspect it in the DOM tree to see if, if it's the styling that messes it up or if, it's, uh, if they're actually nested wrong. So, yeah, it seems to be the styling. Somebody has some styling rules, which, uh, yeah, I think you have this. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll just delete it because it seems like a bad assumption. It, it was to make everything. Uh, it was the idea. You had to go to the style. So, good. okay. Um. Yeah, and let me see again what you're aiming for. Um, so, okay, so I'm gonna, how close they actually, do you care about this specific styling? Like, do you want me to replicate the, the mar exact margins and stuff? Or is it mostly just the things in the, uh, in the task, like, uh, are clickable only, and different colors? You only have to do, uh, well, it's okay. on the task. Okay. Otherwise, all the other things that you want to do it, they are okay. But you only have to do those. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna make. I'm actually gonna split up uh, this component. 
because uh, because I want the folders to be stateful and uh, because they're gonna be collapsible, but files are not collapsible. And so it just seems like it makes sense to split them up. And so, um, and also folders are the only one that have inner content. So I'll just move this here and I'm gonna D if, and the way we determine this is if no children is null, we're gonna render the file. And otherwise, we're going to render a folder. And also, because this can never happen, I can delete this. And here I can do this. Um, OK, and then we want this to be, um, well, Wait, no, I messed it up somewhere because it isn't showing. Why isn't it showing the um isn't showing the file name? I think it's camel guys. Uh, oh okay, I don't, okay, yeah. Uh oh, TypeScript would have helped me here, yeah, right? Uh, totally. I didn't okay, want to say it, but okay. Yeah, maybe uh, I just don't remember the syntax. Uh, but yeah, it's if, interface in that case. Otherwise, if you uh, want to use type, you have to use equal. Okay, so, oh, yeah, I guess I, I read about the difference once and I still have no idea what it is, but let me just, uh, yeah, so ID is a string and file name is a string and what else, children? is either null or yeah. it is a Probably I had to yeah. say it before, but you have a types file in SRC that has all those types. Uh, oh, okay. Well, um, okay. Uh, nested file, main file. Well, I guess nested file, it's... Okay, I'm, I'm gonna call this... Mm. It's like both for I guess that's that's node, right? Essentially in my Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, import that how you do it in TypeScript. Yep, that's that's uh, okay. Types TS. Okay. I don't know if this actually works. This is the check. Uh node was used before the by the way, okay, sure, I can. Ah, this linter thing is is annoying because it doesn't actually like. There's no way this would execute first, so it doesn't matter. I don't know why we have this linter rule turned on. Um, anyway, I'll I'll, I'll ignore the type stuff. Well, it seems okay. like the type stuff is. Why do you have squigglies? Uh an import path cannot end with the GS extension. Okay. Is that, does that make it happy? Okay, it's possible. Not. Well, this is because the types are written this way. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, you can um, modify okay, it. I'll ignore the types. Needed. Or you can, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll just, I just want to get it working first and I'll think about types later. So, it's okay. Um, yeah, so I want to use some state, please. And I want to put it into the folder. So uh, initially, it is initially it's not expanded. Oh no, it is, it is initially actually expanded. So um, so what do you have in the picture? Yes, yeah, so I suppose you just want clicking on the thing to expand it. Um, So I'm going to make it a button so that it's actually accessible, but it, it want to kind of style it differently. Um, so yeah, we just want to toggle that. And I think that, oh, and I, I should actually use it. So if it's, it's, if it's expanded, I want to show all this stuff. Otherwise I don't. Okay, that, that actually works. 
and uh, I guess I yeah I will style this button later or I don't have to style it I don't think that was in, in the requirements no. and then I want the um, what did you want you wanted the show in, in different colors depending on the on the extension so I can do this in in the file I can do um, I'll just use blue and yellow. I think that's it's okay. Cool. We can say that it's it's like close enough. And um, so if if no that file name that ends with um, in your example, I think it's server dot dsx, or we could adjust it if we wanted to make it work with JS, uh, but. So far, I think all of these are. Yeah, I think that's. Uh, let me let me double check the requirements. So uh, show all folders and files using UL and li. I think I'm doing that. Files and folders should have correct indentation. I think they do. Can be toggled. Um, Server.js should. Yeah, I think that. I think that works. Excellent. Well, I'm really glad that I. I added the algorithms interview because otherwise this will be the entire interview and it has been just like 30 minutes. Uh, I, okay. I, I, I can still, still fix up imagine. the types if, if you want. No, no, no. We still have algorithms. Uh, and that's okay. okay. If, if we finish with the, inter with the algorithms in like five minutes, as I probably expect, uh, because they are releasing and we can go back to it. Uh, okay. 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 I I don't think we'll be finished in five minutes with the algorithms. <laughs> they, they are. I I look for uh, examples or algorithms that are like, um, not real world cases, but that they are really easy to understand. You don't have to have any okay. no, prior knowledge or something. You have okay. uh, some files in the test file that it's count salutes, uh, valid parentheses and Vasya Clark, and uh, you have the nice. test that in on top of it. So you can just remove the um, skip. You can start with mm -hmm. whatever uh, example you want. OK. OK, so it's three different tasks, and I can start with any, right? Exactly. Uh, yeah, I guess let's start. Maybe let's start. Well, are any of them simpler than otherwise? Like, I think. Uh, I would want to start with the simpler one, but I don't yeah. know which one is simpler. Valid parenthesis is probably the simple one. Okay, let's let's start there. So uh they're saying I could remove the yeah, okay, I have the have the failing tests. And then the the implementation. Uh one second, let me just just uh Yeah, do you want to so I can see allow the Yeah, sure. Um, one sec. Let me let me change the layout a little bit because my my screen yeah. doesn't. I don't see the whole. Wow. Okay. So write a function that takes a string of parentheses um, and determines if the order of the parentheses is valid. The function should return true if the string is valid, and false is if it's invalid. Um, okay. Yeah, that's actually a pretty cool task, uh, and I'm not sure how to do it. So that's that's also cool. Um, okay, so I think, um, what does it mean for them to be valid? It means that, um, let me just, I'll just write some notes for myself. Valid goalie lisp, basically. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so if um, left baron in the beginning is valid, but for example, right baron in the beginning is not valid. Because okay. we kind of, if we were counting them, we would kind of go into minus one. And I think we're not supposed to go into minus one. I don't know if that would be sufficient. Um, um, let me just, uh, yeah, I'm just curious. Well, I guess also if at the end we don't end up with zero, that means that some have been kind of unclosed. Um, 
Oh, does it is it valid the um yeah okay so this is also valid I can yeah 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 so let it, let's uh, I'll just write the naive kind of implementation just based on kind of my my guess and we'll see if that that makes any sense so I will I will track how deep I am and um. And for every character in this train, uh, I would read the character. Oh, I'm sorry, I used let here. <clears throat> um, yeah, um, I don't care. So, so we take the character, and if um, if it's this. I'll do something, and if it's this, I'll do something, and I can just assume this string is valid because I think, uh, well, I don't know. Well, I guess if it's something else, uh, I don't, I don't know if you consider like if I should like throw it here or something. Now I'll just return false, but you don't have. Well, you did. Well, interesting. Empty example is fine. Okay. I don't have any examples with uh, bad inputs, so I don't know what you want there. Uh, well, yeah, the, the third one and the second one are uh, bad inputs. Mm. The no, no, no. I'm I'm in something else. But uh, anyway, let's. Oh, okay. um, yeah, I'll I'll just say. I'll just say this for completeness. Um, so if if we're going here, we're increasing the depth. If we're going here, we're we're, we're decreasing the depth. And I think if the depth, um, I think if the depth falls uh, below zero, I think that's bad. I think it means that they're misaligned. And I think if if at the end the depth falls below below zero, I think. Well, if the depth is not equal to zero, I think they're also misaligned. Um, otherwise, I think they're okay, but that's just my guess. It seems like I'm not. Well, I'm passing some of them. So empty string. Um, we start at depth zero. Oh, sorry. This should have been outside the loop, of course. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think that I think that works. Well, that I wasn't expecting that because I know another solution, uh, totally different to what you have in mind. But it looks I I can think more about it if it's not the most efficient one. No, no, no. It, it's it's pretty efficient. Um, let's see if you can see like the other solution. Like, let let's start with a valid case like this one. Uh, like this one. How do you know or, or which chunk you are sure that it's correct, like it's valid? Well, like if, I would have to, well, I know that the the first one and the last one are valid. So I keep kind of recurse into that. Like if, if the first and the last are parent, like opening and closing, then I can, if it, it's valid, if its content is valid and then the, the base case is if it's empty, it's also valid. But then if if I can't take one of them, so if it's like if it's not an odd number inside, then I think it's not it's not gonna be valid. Well, or if if the left and the right side are not parentheses, then it's also not gonna be valid. Yeah. There is a an easier uh chunk that it's valid. That it's an opening right before a closing one. Uh, a closing one right after an opening one, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, we already know that this chunk is valid, right? So yeah. what if we imagine that we are iterating this, right? We have this one and we say, okay, we know that opening and closing are valid. So we can remove them. Mm -hmm. And now we end up with opening and closing again and we remove them. And we end up with yeah. opening and closing again. So, so I don't like this solution because we have to search for the same things multiple times and we exactly. also have to create like extra strings. Exactly. It seems less efficient than just one traversal. 
Exactly. It, what you may hear, it's way better than that solution. And when you started doing this part, like when you reach it here, I say, hey, this was way better than what I expected. But well, uh, just so people understand what a normal person will try to do. Um, so well, I hope it's correct because I don't actually know if like my solution misses some pieces, but at least it passes this test. Yeah, so I just put some uh, examples that they are the ones, uh, the original ones, but I haven't tried with other random. Uh, but it was really nice. So uh, this one, it's the middle one before the, the not, none of them are really complex. Right, uh, mm -hmm. but we can continue with the count salute one. Okay. Um, so let me uh, let, let, let me reformat this slightly because I can't really read the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, without wrapping. Okay. There is an error hallway in which people can go right and left only. Well, wow, that sounds really claustrophobic. Um, when two people meet in the hallway, by tradition, they must salute each other. People move at the same speed, left and right. Uh, I don't really understand this yet. I'll, I'll just read it and then yeah, try to understand it. Will it will make sense later. The task is to write a function that, given a string representation of people moving in the hallway, we count the number of salutes that will occur. Note, this let's occur when people meet one to the other and vice versa. People moving right will be represented by right arrow. People moving left will be represented by left arrow. An example input would be like right dash dash. Dash represents empty space, which you need not worry about. OK. Um, Does it make sense now? No, but I'm um, I'm looking at the examples. So, so two people moving right will meet two people moving left. Oh, okay. So a total of four meetings will occur. And eight salutes will occur. Um. Uh, okay, so the number of salutes is just twice the number of meetings exactly. always, because we assume that they both are able to salute. Um, okay, and here, two people moving right will meet two people moving, wait, oh, I see. So there's, uh, these people are moving away, no, wait, uh, so, yeah, I understand why it says, yeah, but they're, is... they'll meet. Once, which which other ones are gonna meet? No, uh, remember that every time someone meets, it's a salute from. Oh, okay, each okay. Uh, I think I'm just confused why it says right above. Hence, a total of four meetings will occur, but it says the output is two. Uh, no, in this case, uh, like this. Oh, this was explained. Sorry, exactly. this was for the this, previous one. Exactly, okay. and this one yeah, goes to it. this one. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I thought that this relates to this. Okay, so let me just reread it now because I think I understand what you're saying. So there's an, okay, so. Okay, so the things can move in two directions. When things, uh, they don't have any specific speeds or, or like they're, they're all going at the same speed, I guess. Exactly, yeah, it's a, um, at first, yeah, same so speed, like, same. yeah, so if they could move into the same direction, they will never catch up. So the only case where they meet is actually if they look in at, at each other. So what we're, what we're being asked to do is count how many, uh, how many pairs of these things are opposite to each other. I think that's, that's what it's asking because like here for this thing, so we have, like, here is, uh, sorry, here is one pair, here is pair two, this is pair three, and this is pair four. And here, the only pairs that are looking in 
directions are uh, one, yeah, this one pair. Okay, so I count the number of pairs looking in looking at each other and I multiply that by two and that is the answer. Um, so um, Hmm. Interesting. So I think the first thing I would want to know is just, well, I guess it's, what does it mean to look at each other? It means that they have to be... That's pretty deep. Right. <laughs> uh, well, it, it means that the the left one is the one that, like, the uh, greater... Um, greater than and then the right one has to be the the less than and yeah i think that's that's what it means uh yeah i'm not sure what's the most efficient way to do it yeah um, you're, you're can maybe start by you. like you can do something and if you find a way to do it like the best way possible yeah, I think I think I'll just start with uh, I'll just start with some naive approach, and maybe I'll think of like a better approach as I understand the problem better. But yeah. it would just help me to actually start coding instead of, you know, just only thinking about it. Um, and maybe this will be my downfall. Uh, but um, well, I guess still let let me let me kind of. Think about it a little, though. That's a random so, fact for for this exercise. There's a really narrow hallway in Amsterdam uh, that was where this exercise uh, was based on, uh, and people okay. usually greet each other when they go through it. Okay, that's 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 cute. Um, so. So I think the most naive approach would be to find all the, like, to record positions of all the greater than arrows, uh, arrows, and then record positions of all the uh, less than arrows, and then loop through like each of them, like, kind of squared. So like for each, for each, see if. Uh, If uh, yeah, I'll 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 maybe do that and see and see if this works and and then I'll think if there's any way to optimize it. Um. So um. <laughs> so I'm going to do a single pass in a string and I'll just record um, so if it's if it's this thing then I want to um, yeah, I want to push its index. Or if it's this thing, I want to push its index as well. And so by the end of this, I have to erase. Um, I'm just going to, I don't know, is that, is that, is that how you focus on the test? Yes, I think so. Um, so I'll just just look at what's going on here. Um, does it does it print something? Okay, there's a console. Yeah, okay, it works. So we have the 
zero nine thirteen. And this is like zero. Yeah, and then yeah. Okay, so for um so for each um Uh, for each um, thing in the left arrows, I want to take a one of the right arrows. And then if, so I'm not interested in the ones uh, to, the, to the left. So if, um, if right, if right index is so, um, yeah mm, yeah so if the right index is the left of the left index i don't care about it if it is to the right then it seems like a valid pair so i think uh I think I might want to increment this. Uh, and then maybe I return this multiplied by two. But can I, maybe I just return this? It somehow fits, I don't know if I, if I just, no, <laughs> this isn't right. Okay, um, Okay, but, but one of them is right. So let, let me see what's, well, two of them are right. Let me see if it's an accident or if I'm onto something. So this one has a lot of right arrows and it has one. Okay, so for each, uh, okay, so let's focus on this test. So uh, left arrows, right arrows, what does it say? So left arrows is 25. Wait, this is not right. Uh, am I looking at the right thing? Did I confuse left and the right ones? So, oh, wait, left, left wait, left arrow, yeah, I, I got confused by naming. So, the arrows point in, the left arrows is other things pointing to the left. So, yeah, the left arrows yeah, are, are currently at the right, right? Yeah, so I think I want to swap. It's left pointing well, arrows. Wait. Yeah, so I think uh, I actually, I guess this doesn't actually matter which, but I think just, I was kind of thinking about it this way. It's just more natural for me. So, uh, so for each right pointing arrow, take a left pointing, and then if the left pointing arrow is to the left of the right pointing arrow i think i i don't really want it okay so this is where the times two disappeared it's actually it was actually needed yeah that works well i should kill the console log but i don't know if it's the most efficient way it kind of like i'm not a huge fan of the n squared uh, it's okay. There yeah. is always that person in Cold Wars that solves the kata with a regex, but uh, you have always another way to do the things. Uh, I think it's it's really okay. Um, my solution, of course, uh, for this thing was really similar to the other one, but of course it's not uh, like efficient. But it was basically removing all the white spaces in this mm -hmm. case. And say okay every time i came around of one of these i will just say okay this one goes to there and i will get every time they meet each other in this case it mm -hmm. was just one so i will output two in this case you will say same thing like you have this one remove one remove this remove this and say mm -hmm. okay i have this one yeah same thing i see not well, efficient. you're kind of simulating them actually walking. Exactly. Like, so say, right? That my brain needs this uh, like kids thing that you have to see the result. Otherwise, I can like make up all the entire scenario like you did on my head. Yeah. Uh, but well, it is one of the solutions. Um. So this third exercise, it's also 
like this. Like you can do the solution as the other, as the other two, but it's something like a real case scenario. Uh, yeah. Do you want to read this aloud? Yeah, let me let me also split it up a little bit. You can have like a button to wrap the text. Okay. Um, okay, so the new Avengers movie has just been released. There are a lot of people at the cinema box office standing in a huge line. Each of them has a single, um, well, I guess this, yeah. So, I, yeah, single $150 or $25 bill. Uh, and the, the ticket costs $25. So, Vasya wants to sell a ticket to every single person in this line. Can Vasya sell a ticket to each person and give the change if he initially has no money and sells the tickets strictly in the order people follow in the line? Return yes if you can sell a ticket to each person and give the change, otherwise return no. Okay, let, let me just uh, try to figure out the example. So, so the line is twenty five, twenty five, fifty. Yeah. Okay, so Vasa has no money initially. Exactly. So Vasa get gets twenty five, twenty five. They have fifty and uh, wait. Whoa. Let me reread this. Oh, okay. So each person is buying just one ticket. Exactly. Um, and so in this case, Vice is able to help the third person because he needs to give 25 back and he has a 25 bill. Whereas in this example, uh, Vice uh, gets 25 and then he needs to give back 75, but he doesn't have 75, so he's not able to do that. Exactly. And then here, I put in 25, 50, 25, 100. That should be fine. Yeah, so at some point, I guess this breaks down, but I don't know where. So, okay, um, let's, let's unskip it. And let's, uh, let's just start with this case, I guess. Uh, so, mm, interesting. So, I need to track how many bills of each currency I I have, and yeah, kind of hard coded, like three variables. I have a map, but I only really have three predefined. Well, I'll, I'll start with three variables. I'll maybe change that to map later. So, um, I'll say, I'll have like three variables, like count of 25, count of 50, and count of 100 nodes. In the beginning, we don't have any. And then for each, uh, for each incoming bill, um, we want to see, so we know that um, um, I forgot what's the English word. Is it change? Like the thing you return? Yeah, it's change. Yeah. So um, so it's uh, bill minus twenty five, which is the cost of the ticket, um, and if yeah. So basically, I want to have. Uh, I want to see. Um well I'll just write if if change is is twenty-five and I don't have twenty-five notes, then things are bad. And similarly if I same Okay, this doesn't quite make sense actually because uh for example change can never be hundred because there's there's no such thing as yeah, I think these are the only two valid cases. Um 
So if change is 25, which is basically if they're given 50, change is 25, I have, I've run out of 25 nodes, then we're screwed if change is 50. Well, change cannot be 50 either, but it could be 75. It could be 75. Yeah, it could be 75. So if changes, I don't know if there's some more generic way to write it, but for now I'll just, because we have three kinds of banknotes, right? Uh, and we have just one price, which is 25. So the only cases are no change. Uh, so if, well. No if, change, 25 and 75. Yeah. I don't know if there's anything to do here, but I'll just kind of add some structure. So uh, if, yeah, so if um, the 75, then I have to have uh, either, well, I actually have a few options here, and that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, so, so I could have, um, again, I'm kind of writing this in a very manual way. Maybe there's some more generic way to write it, but let's say, um, what are the, it seems like it's actually easier to express um, in terms of, good cases rather than bad cases so if yeah so i'll i'll as i'll slightly restructure it for my own sanity so if the change is zero and i'll need to keep track of the bill i got but for now if the change is zero i don't need to do anything if the change is um, 25, then if on 25 is more than zero, then we're cool. If the change is uh, 75, then if um, if we have at least three of this we're cool if we have um at least one of these and at least one of these we're also cool and i think in other cases we're we're not we're not cool so uh yeah that is it that is a case where we gonna go into no and we also need to actually keep track of um, <clears throat> uh, we also need to keep track of the the thing we just received, right? So that's um, yeah. So I could do this either before or after. I don't think it actually matters, uh, but I think conceptually. Um, well, no, it matters because I have continue here, so I can't actually escape this. So I want to do this here. So, um, well, but I don't want to modify, like I want to use, okay, maybe my structure was bad after all, <laughs> because I don't I don't want to exit the loop without, uh, without adding it to the balance. So I think what I'll do is restructure this again, but I'll, um, I'll assume we're not okay. I'll say this is okay, this is okay, this is okay, this is okay. Um, we're not okay. We can exit right now. And also I want the now. Mm, so if the bill is 25, I'll do this. The bill is 50. I'll do this. And if the bill is 800, 
it doesn't really matter we don't use the hundred bills anywhere but okay but yeah. you always want to know how much you have right um yeah so this doesn't work still right so let's um let's dig into why this doesn't actually work uh, i think i still have some console logs from another task let me remember or where, where are these the old Blocks. Okay, yeah, these are the old blocks. This is it doesn't work. Um let me kind of just go through it first. So uh 25, 25, 50. So we start with 25. I assume okay is false, change is 25 minus 25 is zero. So okay is true. Not okay, okay. Bill is 25. Now out of 25 is incremented, we go to the next one. Then I do 25 again. This is one. Okay, I'm I'm too lazy. I'm I'm gonna cancel all this. So um bill is this and then Okay, and let's reset this. Um, okay, so bill is twenty five. Uh, and I'll also add this. Okay, so bill is 25. Before it was zero. Now we have one. Bill is 25. Wait, wait. The base case should be. Yeah, but yeah. Okay, so this one doesn't work. I'm glad that you didn't uh, make this one in like five minutes like the other ones because at least we have some more content. <laughs> yeah, so let's see. Uh, this one is kind of annoying because I don't know why. Because uh, I, I don't obviously see why this one is wrong either, but I guess I'll just I'll just read through it and see where it kind of breaks down. Um, okay, so we start. Bill is 25. Uh, now we have 125 bill. Then the next bill is 50. We used to have one. Oh, when I give change, I should spend the bill. So Let, let's, if I, I... I can give you a hint because this is something that happens a lot. If you are going to buy something, like you, you are the clerk, you have to give the money back to people and you have two options, like the option in line 40 and the option in line 44, uh, sorry. The option in line 44 so, and the option in line 47. Which one will you do first and why? Uh, well, I guess I would do this one first because, uh, well, because I'm actually using 50 for. Exactly. you know useful purpose and i'm not wasting my 25s exactly sure i could you can't split a 50 billion 25 bills yeah but but i also have the i think i also have the problem that like uh i should be spending my money so this, exactly. this should do this and like this should do this and this well yeah, I think this should be this, and I, yeah, I can kill the logs, and I don't actually need this.
yeah i think this i don't i'm i'm not i'm not a huge fan of like how verbose it is like if i had to deal with arbitrary um like arbitrary numbers i would have to actually like think of some generic version of this yeah, um, but you are but, you are in an interview right yeah, yeah and you already made like three algorithm exercises two challenges and a lot of questions so it's it's really really nice uh yeah that, that that's perfect um well sadly that that was uh, all the challenges i have for you i, I wasn't expecting you to I, I we will back to your view here i wasn't expecting you to uh, make the file list I, I, I was expecting that you made that fast but not so fast and same thing with the the other ones uh, that's good for you because you are in an interview and you want to get hired because you want to leave the other shop that it's really boring but uh, i wasn't expecting that um well, it was awesome uh, yeah i mean it it's, awesome it's not you. it's not the first time that i make a tree out of something <laughs> like we, we actually have an example in the in the new documentation where there's like a tree of continents and countries and cities and stuff so i wrote like code exactly like this pretty recently and it's also like i think it is i think it is collapsible if i'm not mis i'm not sure but yeah that's that's the thing i wrote before so it's just familiar well i leaving the interview mode I was about to make you uh, do the exact same um, free component from the keynote video. And I wasn't sure about if it was a really good example. Uh, and so I said, okay, let's go for an easier one. And I, I decided to do the files. What do you think? Uh, you think you were able to do that if you were on this interview? Like the same, this image. The one that it's on public uh, keynote PNG. Uh, hmm. It was way difficult, I think. Yeah, I think that I think that should be doable. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. like the CSS is probably going to be ugly because I don't know what's the right way to do it. But I think that I would expect that to be doable. Yeah. Well, I decided to go for, for the file list because it's easier. And the main thing it was about yeah, the sure. CSS, like uh, the the um, curved lines. Uh, it was really hard, but okay, uh, it was awesome. Uh, there, there's a lot of people in the chat that it's saying a lot of things. Like, I can't believe that he made it. Like, how he made it in five minutes, and people love you. Like in the community, people love you. I. I you already know that people love you in the community at all, but this is our like small or own community. And they were really excited as me when you decided to go through this process. So first of all, I want to thank you for being here. I hope you have at least some of the fun I have doing this interview and taking this interview. Uh, yeah, it, it was really fun. I, I like the, I like the questions and I appreciated that again, like it, it didn't feel like I needed to know anything specific to solve them. They're kind of common sense. Um, I'm still curious if there are like more efficient, like especially with the um, with the arrows thing, like the, the nested loop is just like make me uh, uncomfortable. Well, the, uh, the exercise will be available. It has to be some way. The code sandbox, I just shared, huh? the, I just shared the code sandbox on the chat and the code sandbox will be available whenever you want. So if you want to go back to your yeah. interview in some free time, uh, you can go back to it. And also for people that comes uh, to the stream, usually uh, people can donate to my content through an app called Cafecito. But today all donations will go to um, a ONG called Verte Reir that it's uh, getting, it's um, trying to build an internet, an internet antenna in in uh, the school number 23 in Christian Andersen uh, from Estancia Grande, Concordia, Entre Rios, here in Argentina. So uh, all donations will help uh, kids to get internet access in a city that 
it's not available yet. So people, you have the link down there if you want to help. Uh, sadly, it's only for people from Argentina because it's used Mercado Pago that it's like a payment method in here. Um, but they are already have 76% of the objective. So that's really nice. And thanks for uh, all the people that already donated. And for all the people that subscribed during the interview, I will match the amount of uh, subscription that was donated and I will donate to Berta Reir so we can match what you have donated during the, the stream. So thanks to everyone uh, for helping these ONGs to, to get their, to their objectives. Um, and again, uh, ah, we have two sponsors uh, from for the stream that it's Workana and Talently. All the money that we get from the sponsor, it's distributed uh, for, for the people in the community. We don't get any money from them. So uh, we have like a bunch of uh, giveaways that we will do after saying goodbye to them. Uh, but I can't really thank you uh, enough for being here because it was awesome for me and it was like, really a dream from uh, a lot of uh, time. We had uh, Kent, we had Cassidy, we have you. This is the first English stream I had in my life, so I'm really happy about it. Uh, again, Dan, thanks a lot for, for the interview. And if you want to change your candies for, have you ever tried Mate from Argentina? Mm, do you like, I don't think so. Do you but like I... tea? I don't like mate in general, so. Mate in general? Like, have you tried mate? Yeah, I, I just don't like. like yeah, I don't, I don't like it. It's okay. Uh, well, if you want to change your candies for any other healthy snacks, we can get over it. Nah, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, thanks. Thanks to you, Dan. And well, hope to talk to you again soon. Uh, All right. Thank you. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.